so that was um sometimes I don't want a human anymore sometimes I just want to be a whimsical butterfly in an idyllic spring forest or field behind the high school hi folks Cypress here in this video, we're exploring all 14 butterflies of the Hocking Hills Butterfly Trail. Now, they're not all very easy to find, so stick with me. I'll get you there. The Hocking Hills Butterfly Trail is a collection of large metal butterfly wings printed in the patterns of 14 local species situated in and around Logan, Ohio, Rockbridge, Ohio, and the surrounding area. They're all mounted on posts for selfies at each location. Estimated shoulder height does vary, so some of them are better for kids and some for basketballers. I'm 5'5", and a greater portion of them sat with the top of the wings just below my armpits. Contrary to its name, the butterfly trail is not a single footpath along a nature trail. You'll need vehicular conveyance to participate. To reach each stop in order, you'll travel a total of 35 miles, and the trail map estimates the journey taking four hours. It took me six. Of course, I was frogging around. My original goal in visiting the butterflies was to get out and enjoy the bursting of spring. I wanted to soak up some nature in honor of Beltane, or May Day. After all, a little forest frolicking is a lot more accessible to modern audiences than frenzied naked dancing around a Wicker Man bonfire. Now, some of the locations do offer lovely dallying opportunities. A few of them are in park-like settings with places to sit in the shade and even have a snack. But honestly, most of the butterflies are set baking in the hot sun in an exposed field or patch of grass. I endured solar radiation poisoning to bring you this content. You're welcome. Okay, let's talk about finding these butterflies because I nearly gave up in frustration a few times. And keep in mind as we go that all of the butterfly wings are wheelchair accessible. Uh, that is, if your chair can trek across a lawn or maybe a bit of gravel. The only possible exception to this is the last butterfly, which I can't confirm or deny, but we'll get to that one. Our first stop, appropriately, is the Monarch Butterfly at the Hocking Hills Regional Welcome Center, where we can pick up a printed map and our passport to the day's adventure. Like any Welcome Center, there's all kinds of information and brochures about the activities and adventures you can get up to in the area. The Welcome Center boasts fun landscaping and a trail where the kids can stretch their legs before being in the car all day. The ladies at the desk were kind enough to stamp my passport, and I even got this swanky sticker. You'll find the monarch butterfly in a grassy patch behind the parking area. So far, we're off to a great start. Now, on to Butterfly 2, the Great Spangled Fritillary. If you're using a navigation program, the address on the passport will take you right to it. Parking, however, was confusing. I couldn't figure out where to park. I'm not entirely sure where I parked was a parking lot. I ended up in this patch of asphalt, but it's not really wide enough and I'm not sure I was supposed to be there. Vampires like myself should be warned that the one third mile pine trail here is, in fact, completely treeless, exposed to the brutal sun. And this early in the spring, it was more of a mown strip around a big, dry field. But it's probably got amazing butterfly action in the summer. The Orange Sulphur is our third stop at the Hocking Valley Community Hospital, which is easy enough to find. However, it took me a while to locate the butterfly. 
This would have been easy to find except that I'm familiar with this location because I take my recycling here and I know there's a workout space and I figured the butterfly was there. So I drove all around the hospital like twice before I located it right in the front, right in the front. So not hard to find, but I made it hard to find. I anticipate you will find this one much more quickly than I did. The Silver Spotted Skipper takes us into downtown Logan. Stop four is Worthington Park. Navigation is easy, but again, there's no dedicated parking, so you'll have to sidle up to a curb somewhere. The gazebo here is particularly nice, when you can catch it unoccupied. A lot of weekends have this location buzzing with outdoor music. Our butterfly is conspicuously situated to one side of the green space. Now, skipping across town, we'll find the clouded sulfur at the Bowen House, which serves as a community event location. The Bowen House. OMG. The butterfly wings are easy to spot from the street at the back of the large yard. However, it was closed. Frustratingly, the property was closed for a private event, so I couldn't get close enough for a selfie. I didn't want to risk causing trouble running across the yard to get to the butterfly wings. So we, we missed that one. I was, however, serenaded by this church ringing in the noon hour. Although, honestly, they could be ringing this bell to call all the villagers and their pitchforks to drag me to a large fire. I should probably get out of here. Stop 6 gives us the Red Admiral. The location is the Hocking County Historical and Genealogical Society. There wasn't much yard here, so I tried out back. I looked behind the main building and the one labeled Museum, and I didn't see any wings. And I couldn't go in and ask for help because the office is closed until 1 p.m. Frustrated and thinking that the wings must just be inside the locked building, I gave up and came back later in the day. So I come rolling all the way back here at the end of the day, and I'm going around behind the museum again like I did before, and it's not there. And this time the building's open, and I walk in thinking I can talk to uh, a docent, only they're having a meeting of the historical society that I accidentally walked in on. Yep. That happened. So they were really, really nice and they directed me to the butterfly, which was actually t on the opposite side. It was part of the complex, but it was not the labeled as the museum. It's a house that is a museum, I guess. And it was on the front side of that house, kitty corner on the other street. So found it. By now it was late in the day and I was hot and tired, so Finally finding this stupid metal butterfly felt like an epic victory. Butterfly 7 is the Pipe Vine Swallowtail by the Hocking Soil and Water Conservation District on the Hocking County Fairgrounds at the east end of town. Really wasn't sure where to park. Parked in front of the Conservancy, walked around, Spotting the butterfly is a little complicated. It's on the south side of the Soil and Water building in a small garden that was clearly not ready for visitors. I wasn't sure I should be there because there was landscaping fabric everywhere. It looked like they were in the middle of getting the garden ready for summer. And I had to walk all the way around into the fairgrounds through the main gate and then back to the little garden. Maybe they expect guests to come physically through the building, but when I went inside to have my passport stamped, I found no one. And nobody was at the desk, and I wasn't gonna make somebody stop whatever she was doing and put a stamp on a brochure like like I'm five years old. I'm not, I'm not gonna do that, so. So I snuck out the way I'd come in. Number eight, reaching the Viceroy is counterintuitive. 
There's no address on the map for the City of Logan Community Garden. It's just behind the city garage complex on Radio Lane. Well, I think this is the garage complex, and I didn't see any friendly driveway. I even drove around these storage garages thinking maybe it was there. Finally, getting frustrated, I was getting myself turned around at the military base when way out in the grass, I saw a pair of wings. So I parked by an aggressive looking tank and walked all the way back and around. It is behind the giant messy junkyard workshop area. However, I parked at the military base. There weren't any signs that said I can't. Nobody stopped me. There's a rocky path that will take you right to the wings. I don't understand the rationale for the placement of this one, but a checklist is a checklist and this selfie must be had. The red spotted purple is stop nine at the Logan High School. It's not out front. It's in the back, way, way back behind the student parking lot and behind the baseball diamonds. I was not comfortable infiltrating a school ground. This tripped me out because why is it at a school? Like schools are making the news every day because people are getting shot. Why would they want a random strange adult driving in while everybody's in school? The whole time I felt really weird and creepy like they're gonna get security to escort me out of here. No! Nope. In fact, the guy mowing the lawn smiled and waved at me. Must have figured I was a parent because I'm driving a minivan. I guess I had great camouflage. I very nearly gave up on this one, but feeling bold, I thought I'd troll the perimeter. It paid off, and the red spotted purple is in one of the prettier settings, actually, in a field on the far east side of the campus. Were it not for the commotion of the school, this could have been a lovely spot for some May Day shenanigans. Then it was on to find the Pearl Crescent at the Chieftain Elementary School. Again, really not comfortable at a school while it's in session. I'm stranger danger. This butterfly is easy to spot, even from the parking lot. It's way off to the left side or the west in front of a little nature walk. The wind was a bit brutal here. I lost one of my antennae, twice. At this point, stop 11 takes us to the neighboring town of Rockbridge. The Hackberry Emperor sits at the trailhead of the Rockbridge State Nature Preserve. I've hiked here a few times. I'll link a video exploring the Rockbridge below. Happily, finding this butterfly is straightforward. You may want to enjoy the preserve, but give yourself at least a couple of hours to see the Rockbridge and explore the trails. The Eastern Tiger Swallowtail is our 12th stop. It's easy to find, despite not having an address. Simply look for Rockbridge Road A from where it meets Highway 33, and the big metal wings will be on the left side of the road, traveling northeastward. And now, the real adventure begins. The Spice Bush Swallowtail is located in the Bishop Educational Gardens, which means we drive about eight miles through the countryside. You will feel like you've lost the way, but nay, the gardens exist. I didn't get into the actual gardens while I was there, but the grassy area by the parking was lovely. The butterfly wings are mercifully in the shade, even as early as late April. And there was a really sick playground adventure area that I would have loved to explore, but it was fenced off and by appointment only. And I'm not gonna break the rules like that. That's just being a bad citizen. So consider calling ahead. Finally, stop 14 is the Eastern Comma at Butterfly Ridge. Your GPS will get you right there, but what the passport and map won't tell you is that this is an outdoor experience museum with an entry fee of $6 per person. 
I have four dollar bills in my wallet. So, while I could see the wings from the driveway, I drove all the way out there only to be extorted for money I didn't have. Oh, shit. I never saw this guy waving. I didn't wave back. I'm so sorry, dude. Didn't see ya. I feel a little bait and switched, honestly. It would have been nice to be able to plan. I got all the butterflies, and then I can't get the last one because it's inside the $6 exhibit. It looked like it was probably worth it. It looked like a really cool experience from what I could see of it. You can see the butterfly wings way up against the building, but yeah, I, I feel like there should have been some warning on that one, honestly. That part seemed kind of rude. It was an anticlimactic finale. Also, it looks like this one is not accessible by wheelchair, as I think there are steps involved, but I'm not sure because I couldn't get close. So maybe call ahead and ask. So that is the butterfly trail. I'm not really sure what I was expecting, but it was not quite that. Definitely worth it. Honestly, unless you're really into adventuring, I would break it up into at least two forays because it took me six hours from start to finish. I can't imagine trying to do this with kids in tow. There's just not a lot of payoff at each individual butterfly for kids. The entire thing is just getting to the butterfly to take the picture and then driving and then getting to the butterfly to take the picture and then driving and then at the end of the trip there's even more driving. I, totally worth doing, like I said, but you'd want your kids to be really into that kind of thing or maybe break it up or, I don't know, bring your own entertainment is what I'm saying. I can't think. I gotta turn the car back on. It is really brutally hot. Thank you, Wild Things, for joining me on this scavenger hunt. And may your own foray to find the butterfly wings go a bit more smoothly than mine. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, keep it wild.